Hi everyone, this is Clayton from uh, My Pets Brace. I'm one of the practitioners here. Uh, I wanted to go over our uh, knee brace fitting video for the standard suspension sleeve that looks like this. If you have a brace that your sleeve looks more like this, this is the extended sleeve. If you're watching the wrong video, uh, I want you to go back and find the one labeled extend, extended suspension sleeve. This is Jack, he's one of our demo dogs that we're going to fit this knee brace on. Uh, before we get started, I want to go over some activity restrictions that you can expect when you receive your knee brace. I know everyone's excited to get back to uh, playing and running around, but we want to make sure that we get on the right foot, start off nice and slow. Um, so when you get your brace, once you've kind of tried it on, either at home or with your vet, uh, you can start off up to three hours the first day with the brace. I like to break that up into short sessions, even if it's just 10 or 15 minutes at a time, up to three hours. That gives you and your pet a chance to you know, learn the ropes on how to put it on, how to take it off. You can figure out if you want your dog to sit or stand or lie down. I don't recommend sitting, it makes it kind of hard. Um, so figure out what routine you want to have. Again, just like people like patterns and routines, dogs do too. So um, decide what you want to do to get your dog used to the brace. Like I said, the first day, three hours, and you can increase up to an hour per day. Um, each day you can add a little more time until potentially you are putting the brace on in the morning and taking it off at night, or at minimum just putting it on for those active times, going on short walks, uh, things like that. You know, to start off, we want to go maybe, thanks Jack, we want to go maybe 10 minutes at a time on a walk, nice and easy, nice and slow. You know, I know it's really exciting to be able to get back to walking around more, but we don't want to overdo it. So, you know, 10, 15 minutes at most, a couple times a day would be what we recommend. If you notice your dog limps a lot more after that, it might be too much too soon. So really the slower you go, the better. You know, let's remember the tortoise and the hare, slow and steady wins the race. We don't want to be in any hurry to get this going. One other thing I want you to remember and keep in mind, you know, I know a lot of us lived in, live in houses with uh, a lot of floors or a lot of steps. So you really want to still minimize steps as much as you can. I know we all love to sleep with our pets at night and have them come up to bed. Um, so if, they, if your dogs are coming up to bed at night, you can help them up the steps. You can have them wear the brace. Uh, initially, it's kind of tough to do the steps in the brace. So give them, some, give them a chance to use the brace a little bit before you have them do the steps unassisted. Uh, but long term with the brace, as much as you can minimize access to the steps, the better. Uh, again, in, in my eyes, if you're just going up in the up at night and down in the morning, uh, it should be okay as long as you're not playing fetch up and down the steps or encouraging running up and down. That should be okay. Typically, we want to kind of maintain these restrictions as far as minimizing steps, short walks for about the first three months. Um, from our experience, that's what it takes to really you know get really really habituated to the brace and move really nice and smooth and easy. Uh, after about that three month mark, you can start to um, let, let a little bit more activity happen, a little bit of running in the yard, some light fetch, um, maybe playing with a friendly dog that isn't wrestling too hard. Um, we're still in the thick of that process. Again, remember this is a six to nine month process. Um, so you know, after about that three months, you can start to do a little bit more uh, with, with the brace. So before we put the brace on Jack, he's being a great uh, patient patient so far, uh, I want to kind of go over what all the straps are and how they function so that if you call for replacement straps or if your dog gets a hold of a strap and puts a couple holes in it, you know exactly what to ask for when you call us for a replacement. Uh, so we're going to start from the top of the brace. This is the inside edge of the brace, but I'm going to kind of show you from top down. This top strap is elastic, so it's an elastic strap, top elastic strap. Um, with the reason we have it stretch or have it be elastic is so that it can grab that thigh muscle as it moves. You know, the, when we bend our leg or when your dog bends their leg, that thigh expands and contracts. And so this elastic strap helps hold on to the leg really nicely so that the brace stays on the leg very securely. Working our way down on Jack's brace, we have a elastic strap behind the knee. Not every dog has an elastic strap. Some dogs that are more active or have really long legs, we, we tend to add that extra elastic strap behind the knee to, again, keep the brace more securely on the leg. Some dogs don't need it, some dogs do. So if your brace has this back elastic strap, just keep note that this is on your brace. 
Um, on the front of the brace, as I kind of turn it around, we have this front knee strap. Um, we have it kind of pre-marked with a, with a marking of to where we think it should sit on your dog's knee. Uh, we don't want you to mess with that too much, which is why we mark it ahead of time. So if you do move it, you know where to put it back. Um, but it's a simple Velcro strap and pad that you can adjust the tension. Uh, but again, leave it alone unless you check in with us and we say, oh yeah, it looks a little tight or it looks a little loose, let's move it. Um, that's what puts some pressure on the dog's tibia, on your dog's shin to help uh, keep that knee more stable at, over time. Working our way down more, we have this bottom strap. This is um, the Achilles tendon strap and pad. This pad here, I'm going to turn around, has a groove. That groove, as the name of the strap and pad suggests, it straddles the Achilles tendon. That the tendon is a very strong tendon that connects to the ankle. And so we want that groove to kind of hold on to that Achilles area um, without squeezing too tight and, and causing discomfort or causing restriction in the range of motion. Uh, the pad itself can slide on the strap back and forth so that you can center it properly on the back of the leg. And we'll, we'll illustrate that as I put the brace on Jack here in a minute. And again, as we talked about in the beginning of the video, this is the standard suspension sleeve video, meaning that this is what um, most dogs get from us. This piece wraps around your dog's ankle or your dog's hock to hold the brace up. Without this piece, it tends to slide down. So this, these two straps secure over the dog's ankle. When you open the box, your suspension sleeve was pre-attached to the brace so that we know um, where it should sit on the leg. We've, we've been really making some strides and making sure we put that in the right spot so um, it should be ready to go and get right on your dog's leg. Uh, there's, a, there's a marking that we put on there on the bottom of the sleeve or excuse me, the, near the bottom of the brace that uh, lets us know or lets you know where everything should line up so that when we send you replacements, it has that mark already on it so you know exactly where it's all supposed to sit. Jack looks like he's ready to put his brace on. Jeremy's doing a great job keeping him distracted and keeping him standing up. So we're gonna put Jack's brace on. This is the number one thing I want you to remember before we start. This suspension sleeve, it's made of a neoprene material. On the back here, that's kind of a neoprene. By design, we want it to hold on to the leg and hold on to that skin a little bit. But if it gets too grabby, too much friction, it can really irritate your dog's leg. I want you to make sure you're powdering the brace or powdering the sleeve of the brace at least once a day. When you get up in the morning, just like we all brush our teeth in the morning when we wake up, when you're putting your dog's brace on, you want to put some powder. Um, you can be very liberal with the powder. There's no such thing as too much powder in this case. As I rub it in, the excess is going to fall on the floor. So um, either make a mess on your floor at home or have a trash can nearby or do it over the sink. But the powder is your first defense against irritation and chafing and things like that that can happen. So we want to really want to make sure you're powdering at least once a day. If your dog has sensitive skin or allergies or it's really been hot and humid where you are, um, make sure you're maybe powdering even more than once a day. Um, again, because the softer and uh, more slick this is, the better your dog will do with uh, preventing irritation. So I've powdered this nicely. Jack's curious about that. Um, so you can do this with this in the brace, or in my case, I took it out of the brace to show you. So we're gonna pretend it was already in the brace. I'm gonna put it back in. Everything's lined up and ready to go. So we're gonna have Jack stand up. So when we first put the brace on, as I talked about, the sleeve, the suspension sleeve of the brace is already attached. So really it all keys or starts from the ankle area. This, the brace is gonna hold up around my thumb and finger, hold around that ankle. Um, but when I put the brace on to start off, I like to take the upper corner, the upper part of the brace, and kind of push that up into his belly gently. Uh, Jack doesn't have much of a belly, but I, I wanna push it up as high as I can. And then as we go down, I'm gonna grab this strap that's on the inside of the, of the leg on the suspension sleeve. I'm gonna grab this strap on the inside of the suspension sleeve and bring that around to the outside 
of the sleeve. So usually, you know, when I do this here in the office, I'd put a mark as to how tight that might be. Um, but I'll go ahead and do the other side. This other side now goes around and down. And we're going to have a little, bit of a little bit of a car crash there with those straps. They're going to run into each other without overlapping. And that secures the brace above the ankle bone, above the hock. Um, as far as tension goes, I like to check with a pinky finger down between the straps. Let me use my other hand here. Down between the straps. Snug but not tight. If it's too tight, he's going to drag his toes or knuckle. Um, knuckling would be... If we can make him knuckle a little bit, he would stand on his toes, he fixes himself, that's good. You might notice your dog will knuckle at first, the first few times you put the brace on. That's part of the learning process of the brace. So our brace is nice and snug around the ankle. So now I'm gonna take my bottom strap, that Achilles tendon strap and pad we talked about, and bring this pad around behind the leg. As I said before, the pad slides so it, it, this would be too far to the to one side, so I'm gonna slide it so it kind of sits on the back of that Achilles. Then I can open the loop of the buckle, go through the strap, or go through the buckle, excuse me, with the, with the strap, and bring it around and secure it. Uh, as far as tension on this strap, I can get a whole finger, I could even get two, as long as it's kind of gently holding on to that Achilles and calf area, that's plenty tight. We're going to work our way up here. Hold on, Jack, you got to stay up. We've got this elastic strap that we talked about before that's going to go behind the knee and the buckle, the loop of the buckle, you can push open and then pull it around. Want to put a little bit of tension on the strap and then fold the Velcro back around. As we talked about before, this front strap is already set up. That looks like it's going to be just right. It's sitting just below the bend of the knee, that's where we want that to sit. Um, so that's in the right spot, and we'll, we'll review that in a, in a minute or two. We're gonna then do our top elastic strap. As I said before, it stretches, so I'm gonna pull that around behind the thigh, through the buckle, and then fold the Velcro in place. Just like the lower strap, I can get a finger or so. You know, generally, I look for about an inch of elastic pulled through the buckle. Um, you can see in Jack's case, this kind of leans down a little bit, the strap. Hold on, Jack. So you can kind of push that buckle down so it kind of lays square like that. And that's how you put the brace on. It's totally normal for your dog to not be sure what this brace is and what they're supposed to do on it. Again, Jack is kind of sitting awkwardly here on the table. Um, he doesn't look very comfortable, and that's totally okay. Uh, your dog may skip, hop, not want to use the leg, kick it out behind them a few times, try and nibble on it, all is fair game. Uh, what you want to really emphasize is, you know, Keep it positive, keep it light. As far as if your dog is having a hard time, don't freak out, don't be like, oh my gosh, what's wrong? Let them kind of collect themselves and kind of keep them moving along and say, all right, let's keep going, let's try to walk. Um, or put them on a leash and go very slow walking around at first so they really get the idea of the pattern. Um, you know, usually I tell people, you know, I can hop on one leg down the hall, okay not for very long versus hopping on one leg standing still or hopping very slowly I'm more likely to want to put my leg down to catch my balance is the same with a dog and a brace especially a small dog um, so 
if you're walking them too fast, it's much easier for them to say, all right, I don't need to use my weird new leg. I don't need to use this brace. I'm just gonna hop along. But if we go slow and very deliberately encourage our dog to walk slowly, they're more likely to catch their balance by putting the brace down or putting the leg with the brace down. Um, so again, hopping, skipping, jumping, all sorts of weird things are okay um, as long as we push through them a little bit and encourage our, our dogs, our pets to uh, to work through that and, and learn how to properly move the brace. So I want to review a couple concerns that we get from clients fairly often and I want to try and address those so um, you know whether you're on the right track or know if there's a reason that you should reach out to us. Um, we often get questions about the amount of gapping that is seen um, below the brace or below the knee area. Um, that, some of that gapping is, is very, very normal. Um, big picture, I want to address the fact that the mold that we make or the mold that your vet made of your dog's leg was when the dog was standing still. When we move, when your dog moves, everything is very fluid, everything is very dynamic. So the muscles move, the shape of the bones, the shape of the bones don't change, but the relationship of the bones change as dogs move. So the brace will move with everything, but the brace is made in one shape and the leg isn't quite the same all the time. So some gapping will happen as your dog moves, that's totally normal. But specifically, we get questions about the amount of gapping on the front knee strap. As I said before, we set that from the factory per se, we set that before it leaves our building to get where we think it's supposed to be. But oftentimes we see that people have made it too tight. So if, if I make this too tight, that pulls the brace forward and we get more gapping on the sides of the brace. We don't want that. But if I bring this and totally undo it and kind of pull the brace back on his leg, now, the, the shin is very close to the front of the brace. We're fairly snug all the way around the knee. A little bit of room up here, that's okay. Jack's fairly strong, he's fairly muscular. Um, so again, as I place this strap and pad, I'm gonna intentionally create some gap and create a little bit of space because I'm pushing on the shin bone to keep that joint back in place. Again, the goal with this brace is we're going to try and control some of that movement of the cranial drawer of movement of the tibia. That's what these, this injury causes. Um, so we want to try and control that. And Jack is bored of my conversation. Um, what you might notice, Jack is sitting with his legs straight, but as his knee bends, the brace tends to lean forward a little bit and we'll, we'll see a little more gapping in full flexion or, or um, bending of the knee as well. That's totally normal. Um, so if you notice a lot of gapping, you know, maybe that front strap is too tight, maybe we made it a little bit too snug, or maybe you inadvertently moved it, not knowing, you're not realizing it. Um, so certainly if you're concerned about it, take some still pictures or take a little video of uh, your, your dog's brace on um, so we can help you evaluate that and uh, we might have you um, go check in with your vet or we might do a Zoom video chat with you to try and address everything. We're, we have lots of ways to try and help you find uh, what the best solution is. One other question that we get related to the knee strap is uh, that it doesn't always touch touch the dog's shin or the dog's knee. Um, again, the, the strap and pad are supposed to contact the shin bone, which is technically below the knee, um, so it should never touch the knee technically. Um, but generally speaking, it really only needs to touch that shin bone when the brace is almost all the way straight. So if we kind of take a look, maybe Anna will zoom in a little bit. There's a little bit of space here at the hinges of the brace, meaning that the brace isn't quite all the way straight, but we've got some contact here on that shin bone. That's good because the last few degrees of extension are what we really want to push on that shin. If we were pushing all the time or contacting all the time, it maybe would be even uncomfortable for the dog. So as the knee bends, as I talked about before, and Jack's brace is fitting exceptionally well, um, as the brace bends, it gets a little bit loose on that shin bone. So there's not always going to be contact with that pad as your dog bends. Uh, as I mentioned before, he has a back strap that really keeps it tighter more often. So just for the sake of example, I'm going to undo that back strap to show you 
that as the brace leans forward, I'm pushing it forward intentionally, there's gonna there's some space there. So you know, as your dog moves, if, if that brace moves forward and back, there's gonna be some space on that strap and pad, and, and that's okay. The goal is that it's contacting when your dog is almost fully straight or in almost full extension, because that's what we want to accomplish from the design of the brace. So Jack has made himself comfortable here. Uh, we're ready to take the brace off. Um, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you can remember that far away, um, you can do the brace, put the brace on and off standing or lying down. Uh, whatever makes you most comfortable or most confident or whatever makes your dog most comfortable. If they have a favorite bed they'll lay on no matter what's going on, maybe work on their work on the brace on their bed. Um, so taking the brace off is simply the reverse of putting it on. I know that sounds redundant or sounds silly, but let's go through that. Um, I like to start from the top elastic strap. I'm gonna put my finger on the buckle area on the strap and work my hand and finger down to the end of the Velcro hook and kind of grab with my fingertip or grab with my nail if you have a little nail and peel the Velcro back. Then I'm gonna back the strap through the buckle and I like to fold it back on itself so it doesn't get tangled up as we take it off. Especially if you have a long haired dog, you don't want that hair to get stuck or pull on your dog's hair as you're taking the brace off. We can leave this front strap alone as I've mentioned, you don't have to undo that. But if you do, that's why it's marked so you can address that. Then we're gonna work on our middle back strap or our back elastic strap. Same thing, I'm gonna take my finger to, toward the inside of the, of the brace and find that Velcro hook, pull it back, and unhook it from the loop and fold it back. Work our way down to the Achilles tendon strap and pad, finger on the outside by the buckle, follow my finger to the inside of the brace, I can kind of feel the end or feel the edge. We'll kind of pull it and rotate it so you can see a little bit. I kind of feel that Velcro. Our Velcro is fairly strong, so it takes a little bit of effort to pull it loose. And then fold that around. And then last, you know, our brace is more or less still on Jack's ankle, on, on your dog's ankle. And that's good. That's what the suspension sleeve is doing. But from there, I like to, you know, put my little fingertip on that Velcro tab and peel it back just like you're you know, peeling a banana, peeling a Velcro shoe. Uh, and then this other one I kind of push back and take the brace off. And uh, we're not done yet. The last thing I want you to do when you've taken your dog's brace off, even if they've only had it on for 20 minutes or they've had it on all day, is I want you to inspect the skin. Um, so Jack is patiently waiting here. As we talked about before, we have powder for the area around the ankle. You can see there's powder deposited on his hair. That's, that's great, that's why we wanna put that powder there. But you really wanna gently massage and check the area on the front of the ankle, as well as the back of the ankle on the Achilles tendon area for rubbing and chafing. Um, additionally, occasionally we get some chafing on the inner thigh. Um, you know, the, in the belly, that skin can be sensitive and, and doesn't have as much hair. So take a look at redness, potential irritation, chafing, or if your dog is obsessing with a particular area when you take the brace off, licking and won't leaving it, not leaving it alone, that usually tells me or should tell you that um, there's something uncomfortable. It may just be simply, you know, your dog needing time to adjust to the way something feels, but I'd rather um, be a little bit extra cautious and, you know, let your dog know that you're listening to them and say, hey, let's check it out. Let's make sure everything's okay. Now just some general housekeeping um, as far as you know, general maintenance of the brace. Um, generally speaking, the brace is fairly easy to maintain. Uh, you can clean the brace, clean, clean the surface of the brace as well as the interior foam lining with uh, mild soap and water or like a mild degreaser like we use Simple Green in the back to use uh, to clean the braces when we have them in. Uh, just wipe it down occasionally with, with some uh, soap and water or that degreaser to get any residue off or any dirt or mud. The plastic is really, really easy to clean. Um, the foam lining, again, the same thing, easy to clean. Other than that, uh, we have in, um, in the boxes that we send or in the bags we send home with you, we send a little wire brush. That wire brush is to help clean the Velcro 
out of the straps or clean the Velcro straps of hair and things like that. Um, you know, you can see we've got some baby powder residue so I can use this wire brush to kind of pull that out, um, mainly to get hair and things out, uh, but use that on the Velcro on the suspension sleeve, as well as the bottom strap or front strap if that gets caked with some hair, you can brush that out. Generally, the elastic straps, we don't want to use the wire brush on. The elastic uses a softer Velcro hook that can get damaged if you use the wire brush too much. On the elastic straps, usually just you know gently kind of pull it with your finger. You can kind of work the hair out um, if it gets clogged with hair. Um, that's really the main maintenance uh, as far as cleaning the straps or cleaning the brace. Uh, as far as wear and tear repair type things, um, these elastic straps, because they are stretchy, um, they will stretch out over time just as the nature of elastic wearing, just like our pants. Um, or stretchy shoes or you know things that stretch tend to not stretch forever. So if you start to notice that the strap is not very stretchy anymore and it's elongated and you're feeling like you have to pull the strap excessively tight or really, really tight before you can get it to hold on to your dog's leg, it may be time for a replacement strap. Give us a call. We can send those to you typically, you know, same day, like get it in the mail to you. And when you get the strap, um, it's either a flathead screwdriver or a Allen head screw. Um, and if, if your brace has an Allen head screw, we typically send a wrench uh, along with you. Another thing that we often have to direct people to address as far as the fit of the brace goes is, uh, you know, as I mentioned before, we mark the suspension sleeve with this little T shape to our best guess as to where everything should sit to get at the right position on your dog's knee. Um, we are uh, quite uh, intelligent as far as making those judgments, but sometimes we uh, have the knee a little lower or a little higher than we expected. So if you're putting the brace on and it doesn't seem to be sitting in the right position, um, send us some pictures of where everything is sitting and we would give you some guidance from there. A lot of times we have people bring, bring the braces up higher on the dog's knee if it's sitting a little bit low. What that would mean is creating some space, creating some distance between the mark on the sleeve and the bottom of the brace. So I'm going to put it in the correct spot at this moment. You know, we, we have very little room from that line to the bottom of the brace. So if we would direct you to say, move the brace up, that would mean create some space, usually about a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch between the line that we drew and the bottom of the brace. You can create a new line for yourself or just remember, okay, we moved it a quarter of an inch up and create some space there. That, even though the sleeve now moves down, that actually moves the brace up because the sleeve is always gonna sit on that ankle area. So that would get the center of the brace where the knee bends um, to follow more closely to your dog's leg. I just want to say a uh, thank you for watching this video. If you made it all the way through or skipped around, I appreciate you uh, taking the time to learn about your dog's new brace. Um, clearly Jack wasn't impressed with what I had to say, but uh, hopefully you found it helpful. And if after this video you still have some questions, don't hesitate to call us, email us, send some smoke signals. Any way you can get a hold of us is great. Um, we'd be happy to help uh, answer any questions you have. Thanks.